This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Right, well, we're on limiting factors, if you remember, linear programming. If you remember, presumably you've only just watched the previous lecture. Uh, but in the previous um, lecture, I we set up the problem. S was the number of standard chairs, E the number of executives. We set up the equations for limitations, and uh, we set up an equation for the objective. But of course, we've now got to go about solving it and getting answers for S and E. And I did say, although there are other approaches, the only approach you can and will be examined on uh, in paragraph five is the graphical approach. So would you believe it? We're going to draw a graph. Now, it's not the easiest thing for me uh, on this, but I'll try and be as neat as I can. I can't show graph paper here, unfortunately. But you know what a graph looks like. Well, two axes. Oops, can't keep my hands still. Uh, and now label the axes uh, S will represent the number of standard chairs, E, the number of executive. And as I should have said earlier, these days the chances of you being asked to draw a graph in the exam are very small because of people doing the computer-based exams. However, even if you're not asked to draw one, you're very likely to be asked to interpret it to prove you understand it. Uh, which is why I'm going to be drawing it. And you should have a revision kit and inevitably there will be some questions in it asking you to draw one. Do, make sure you can do it, that if you can do it, interpreting a graph that's given to you in the exam should be no problem. So I've got my axes S and E and I'll do scales. I'll go up to 40. on each axis. So again, I haven't got graph paper, so this isn't going to be exact. Um, that's going to be about 20, 30, 10. Does that look okay? No. Uh, 20, 30, 10. Uh, and the point is, when we come to do things on it, any point in the graph will represent uh, so many S's, so many E's. So for instance, that point there would represent producing 30 S's and 10 E's. Well, the first thing we're going to do is put the constraints on a graph because clearly there's a limit, uh, or several limits, as to how many we're able to end up producing. And what you want to do First of all, we take the equalities, inequalities we wrote down, but write them as equations. What I mean is, the first one we had was materials. And what was it? It was 2s plus 4e was less than 80. Well, let's write it as equals for a minute. Now you should know from school, quite honestly, that any graph, uh, sorry, any equation of that form where you've no s squared or s cubes or anything uh, will be a straight line. Uh, and to draw the graph of a straight line, the easiest way is to say, well, if s were equal to naught, uh, what would e be equal to? Well, 4 e would be 80, e would therefore be 20. Now that'll give us one point on the line. For a second point, um, what happens if e was equal to zero? If e was equal to zero, uh, 2s will be 80, s therefore would be equal to 40. And we need two points because two points fix a line. And so let's put that on the graph and, uh, and draw it. s naught e20 is there, e naught s40 is there. And so two points fix a line, let's join them up. 
And that line there is our uh, uh, materials constraint. Materials. Now, what does that mean? What it means is any point on that line, any point on the line, any combination of S and E, we'd be using exactly 80 kilos. But remember, um, the actual constraint was that it should be 80 kilos or less. And so whatever answer we end up with is either on the line, or we are using 80, or it's below the line, you know, fewer S's or fewer E's. It must be either on the line or below it. Because if we're the other side of the line, if we're making more S's or more E's, then we're going to be using more than 80. So any answer we end up with has to be either on that line or below it. Well, in a similar way, we do it for every constraint. So labour, what was the constraint? 5S plus 6E. Had to be less than 180, we're going to draw the um, equals. Uh, and again, 2.6 a line, when S equals 0, 6E equals 180, so E would be equal to 30. When E equals 0, 5S would be equal to 180, so S would be equal to, what, 36. 2.6 a line, so off we go again. S naught E 30 is there. E naught S 36 is there. Join them up. And there is our labour line. Uh, and again, whatever combination of S and E we end up with, if they lie on the line, we're using exactly 180 hours. The restriction was 180 or less. So that, uh, any, uh, whatever answer we end up with is either on the line or it's below the line. We can't make more, it can't be anywhere up here, we're limited. Uh, what else? Ah, the last major constraint was the demand for executive. Uh, e was had to be less than or equal to 10, again we draw it for the equals. And it didn't matter what S was, so this is an easy one. If E is equal to 10, Uh, again, whatever answer we end up with um, can either be on the line, and we're making 10, or to the left of the line, because it was making 10 or less. But we can't go above. We can't go to the right-hand side of the line. Um, finally, we have the non-negativity. It couldn't be negative. Well, we don't actually need to draw anything. Because any answer we end up with, S must be greater than zero, E must be greater than zero, and those lines are there. And so uh, we've now got all our uh, constraints on the graph. And what can we interpret from that? Surely any answer we end up with must satisfy all three of those restrictions. So we can't be above the labour line, we can't be above the uh, materials line, we can't be to the right of the demand line. And surely, to satisfy all of them at the same time, we must be in this area that I'm colouring in in red. And see why? You see, we can't we can't be here. 
because although we're below the labour line, we'd be breaking the materials line, the demand line. It wouldn't work if we were here. OK, we're less than demand. That's OK. We're less than labour. That's OK. But we're breaking the materials line. It wouldn't work to satisfy all of the um, constraints. Whatever answer we end up with must be either on the edge of or inside that area I've coloured in red. Now, although I've said it's very unlikely these days you'd have to draw one, um, if I'm wrong and you did, you, you can't colour things in red, everything has to be in black. So I will label it A, B, C, D, O for the origin. But whatever answer we end up with must lie within or on the edge of that red area, A, B, C, D, zero. And we call that the feasible area or the feasible region. So we are now part way there. We know it must be limited by those lines I've covered in red. Of course, we're not there yet, because having known where we're limited, we still need to know which of the possible um, combinations will give us the maximum contribution. But again, I'm going to pause. We'll deal with that in the next lecture.